Hi, I'm Bradley Kunder and I'm delighted to announce the release of MuseScore 4.2. This update marks a massive milestone for guitarists or any composer who works with guitar parts. We've introduced an extensive new system for guitar bends with beautiful engraving and highly realistic playback. 4.2 also brings other significant features for everyone, including valuable improvements for scores with multiple parts and much more. But let's start with those exciting guitar bends. You can now quickly enter four main kinds of bends directly from the guitar palette or via customizable keyboard shortcuts. Both the pitch and the playback speed of bends can be subtly adjusted by clicking and dragging this new interactive curve in the properties panel, which is also fully accessible using the keyboard alone. Multiple bend release sequences might microtonal bends, unison bends, and bends on chords are all possible and are all notated with beautiful industry standard engraving. And to make these bends sound as good as they look, we're excited to introduce Muse Sounds Guitars Volume 1, a brand new free library of carefully sampled high quality guitars, which sound like this. To get your free copy of Muse Sounds Guitars Volume 1, simply update to the latest version of the Muse Hub, where you can also update your Muse Score desktop software to version 4.2. Guitar scores will also benefit from our new system for alternate tunings. Simply drag and drop this tunings element from the guitar palette to specify any kind of string tuning you like. The engraving element updates automatically, and the fret positions in any linked tablature stave will reflect the new open string pitches. To learn more about these features, check the rest of our YouTube channel for dedicated tutorial videos videos, and please also read our handbook pages for detailed instructions on how they can be used. Links for these are in the description below. In MuseScore 4.2, it's now possible to separately synchronize the position and the styling of notation elements between the main score and parts. For example, I may wish to move these dynamics above the vocal stave so they don't push the text too far away from the singer's notes. These changes in the score are now automatically reflected in the parts. I can also correct the position of these slurs in a part and they instantly become desynchronized from the main score, so I don't have to worry about unexpected layout changes there. I can also do things like exclude these clefs from the parts so that they only appear in the main score, leaving fewer clef changes for the players. And using these new toggle switches in the properties panel, I can easily resynchronize both the position and the style of any of these elements so they return to how they look in the main score. All this gives you much greater control over your project, allowing you to style part scores exactly as you need without inadvertently affecting the main score. There are a ton of further engraving updates in MuseScore 4.2, including some long-awaited improvements to how arpeggio lines span chords across staves. They now intelligently switch between voices and carefully avoid any encroaching accidentals. Ties can now also be drawn either inside or outside note heads for both single notes and chords via these new style settings. On the playback front, you can now select individual sounds within sound fonts via this new menu in the mixer. And we've organized our default library, MS Basic, into sensible categories, making it easier for you to substitute an instrument's sound. And speaking of playback, microtonal accidentals now play back in MuseScore 4.2. Just add them from the accidentals palette and their requisite tuning will be configured automatically. You can now choose a score on musco.com and it'll open directly in the desktop app. There's a new minimized view for your cloud scores in the scores page, which also displays helpful information like their visibility status. In addition, we've improved the integration with audio.com, so you can now replace your existing audio tracks when updating your scores. In our last update, it became possible to read scores using a braille reader. In MuseScore 4.2, not only can you read braille music notation, but also write in braille music notation. For more info, check out our live braille features video, as well as the MuseScore handbook. On top of all these new features, MuseScore 4.2 comes with literally hundreds of bug fixes and interaction and engraving refinements. And we're really grateful for the work of many of our community members who assisted not only with testing, but also with contributing some highly requested and much needed updates. In particular, we now have a tempo and primo tempo elements in the palettes, thanks to Remi Tebo. 
as you'd expect, adding these returns playback to earlier defined tempi or whichever tempo you decide to set in properties. There are a multitude of refinements to key signatures, time signatures, and parts, courtesy of Samuel Miklash. And you can now import and export scores in the MEI file format, thanks to the work of Laurent Pugin and Klaus Rettinghaus. If you have the Muse Hub installed, then the latest version of MuseScore is only a click away. Alternatively, you can always download MuseScore 4.2 from our website, musescore.org, which is also the home of our extensive handbook, a joint project of both the MuseScore team and the MuseScore community. Please subscribe to this channel to receive updates about forthcoming releases, and thank you for using MuseScore.